Indonesia, there's Kar Karachi, Ohio. Okay, it's amazing that you guys from all these different time zones made it here. So today, what I'm going to be taking you guys through is a good introduction to getting into digital art. Now, for all of you guys who already know about digital art and are getting into it, this will be a good guide for y'all. And it will also be a good guide for those who are, who are completely new to the field and don't know anything about it, like where to get started. And I'll be taking you guys through exactly what I did to improve from like ground zero all, all the way up to where I am right now. And I'll also be giving you guys a step-by-step -step guide, which you guys can follow as well. Yeah, we'll just wait another minute and then get straight to it. Oh, there's, there's uh, from Italy, from UP, Goa, Argentina, Egypt. Wow. Yeah, this is really all around the world. This is incredible. Get, 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 get. Okay, so I have prepared a presentation to take you guys through. And after that, depending on the time, if uh, it permits, we can also do some question and answers just to get a general idea. We can pick out some of the best questions that are there and uh, so on. But uh, okay, I, I think we can get started. So <clears throat> uh, let's get to this. Okay, I am Derek Dominic D'Souza. You guys know me probably from Instagram or other places. And this is a completely free course for you guys on the basics of digital art and how to get started or at wherever point you are, where to improve, especially if you're a beginner. So uh, let's go, let's get straight to it. Now I'm going to be sharing my screen, but I can also still see your chat going on. So, uh, uh, yeah, let's get straight to it. Okay, guys. So, uh, can you all see my screen? Uh, if uh, one or two of you could just say a yes, then we can go ahead. Okay. Okay, there are still people coming in. Okay, so uh, you guys can see the screen being shared, right? I think my chat is a little stuck. Okay, perfect. Okay, awesome. So uh, let's get straight to it. Oh, welcome to all of you. I'm just setting this up. If any of you guys are interested to know what this program is I'm using, it is called Photoshop. The only reason I'm using it is it's because I'm really comfortable on it. And uh, it just makes these presentations a lot more interactive uh, for you guys. And I just love using it. So welcome. And before we get started, let me take you guys through a small introduction uh, about me and myself. And hopefully this makes me a little more relatable on some aspects, especially the digital arts side. All right. So I started getting into the world of art uh, in at around 2014. 
this is when I graduated from, uh, say, high school, uh, 11th and 12th standard year in India. And uh, most of the time, I, I only used to make traditional art. Like, I had no idea about digital art. And I always knew that I wanted to be an artist. So I went and joined a design college. Now, for those of you who are in India and aware of the colleges here, it is called Shrishti School of Art and Design, which is in Bangalore itself. Now, when I joined the design college, for most of the time, I was still making just traditional art. And what I mean by traditional art, I used to make just a lot of portraits, like mostly just the heads of, uh, of famous celebrities or, uh, or other movie scenes, uh, actors and so on. And I would just make it with pencil on paper or charcoal. And that was my thing. And uh, that is usually what a lot of artists do, uh, especially um, getting into the field, getting into art, you draw your interest. And with that, I entered into college. And one year into college, I tried doing digital art. <clears throat> and this is where I gave up. I actually gave up making digital art because I found it really hard and confusing. And I could not make the transition from uh, traditional all the way to digital. Like this transition was really, really hard for me to do. So, uh, but at the same time, I also started freelancing on the site, which gave me a little experience. Now, all the freelance I was initially doing was with traditional art, uh, which is also just ink on paper, pencil on paper. Now, after that, since I couldn't get to 2D painting, what I started doing was getting into 3D. And uh, so I took a course on a software uh, called uh, Autodesk Maya. And in that software, we learned the basics of 3D modeling. So I used to put out work online. And then that got me a job as a freelancer, as a car designer. So I thought, OK, hey, I'm going to be a car designer. And after that, I worked as a graphic designer for places like TEDx. This was all during college. I used to do this during my free time. And also as a book illustrator. So uh, this was also mostly traditional. Uh, there was nothing to do with what I'm doing at the moment at all. Like I got into graphic design and for those of you who are not aware of what graphic design actually is, um, it is uh, more to do with a branding, uh, more to do with uh, logo design uh, as opposed to, you know, these key illustrations that I do and so on. Okay. Now this, uh, now while this was happening, uh, between the years of 2015 to 2017, I also tried to get into digital art back again because I really wanted to get into animation and I really loved the field. <clears throat> and college showed me a lot of other students there that were good at animation uh, and the potential that the field had. So during this time period, like somewhere within these few years, I spent a lot of time working. It was supposed to be a dust cloud from working hard and figuring out a way to crack digital art. And by 2018, I got a job in Disney India where I worked as an animator and an associate producer. Okay, so I worked there for about nearly three years, 2018, 19, and 2020. And after that, I left Disney and I did a little free plans in live action. So I took a break from animation and I worked with Disney Plus itself, and I worked as a storyboard artist and a concept artist for one of their live TV shows. So I did that for quite a few months, and then I quit that as well. And I started a studio with my friends called Studio Sideline. And uh, this studio exists in, uh, it's based in Bangalore, and in the city that I'm currently in. And we are all the same age. Uh, two of us from my own batch and two of us are juniors. And we work on a lot of animated content, illustration and so on, which is currently my main job, apart from whatever you guys see me doing on social media. All right. Just checking if this is working well. Perfect. Now, now what I did exactly here, between the this time of 2015 to 2018 is uh, I went I tried to really teach myself how to get into digital art and really improve a lot. So in that time period, in a span of one year, 
I went from creating art like this, uh, which was completely basic, completely uh, lacking all fundamentals and just really rushed to creating more realistic things and learning how to actually make backgrounds and, and actually the fundamentals of digital painting. So this was created at around 19 September 2015. And this was at around 13 September 2016. So, and I'm going to show you guys exactly what I did. So I'm placing this here to create some level of hype for the rest of the workshop that I'm giving you guys. OK, so let's move on. Now, the first thing we need to realize is that for a lot of new people here is that digital art is a medium. It's just another medium. Now, when we think about digital art, traditional art, and all of that, we a lot of times we have uh, this notion that digital art is like a whole different sphere. It's a whole different existence in itself. But it's just a medium on how you choose to express yourself or how you choose to express your art. And why is this important? Because this a lot of people tend to shun away from it or just stick to it. It, it depends. It has this strong notion in that sense. And now what it also means is that a lot of the skills you can develop through digital art are transferable. And more so if you are good at drawing in traditional art, you can transfer those skills to digital art as well. So the fundamentals are usually the same when it comes to creating art, whereas you get the fundamentals of perspective, lighting, colors, all of that. It's usually the same for all, <clears throat> for all the fields of art. Now when, where digital art differs is just the medium, which are the tools and the software. But don't let it Im like create this daunting impression over you. Just relax and it's going to be fun, okay? Like, especially if you love digital art, it's extremely fun. It's don't let it intimidate you at all. Okay. So let's get straight to the tools you need for digital art. This is again, especially for beginners. Now we have something known as a drawing tablet, okay? Now in drawing tablets, we have two kinds. And there. Okay. So we have drawing tablets that don't have a screen. These are called graphic tablets and drawing tablets that have a display. And these are just called display tablets. Okay. Now the difference between these uh, are that both of them, while they need to connect usually to an external device, you do need to connect a drawing tablet to something like either a phone or a laptop for it to function. It usually does not have any software in itself. The main difference apart from that is that this, this tablet does not have a screen. Well, this tablet has a screen which you can look at and draw. Now you might ask which is better, okay? Which is better for you to go with? Do you want a graphic tablet or a drawing tablet? Well, the tablet I use mostly is a graphic tablet. For me, I, like for my professional work, what I'm doing right now, uh, you guys can see that I have like a Wacom pen here and there's a graphic tablet down uh, on my table. So uh, I prefer this because I can keep my hand uh, down on the table and look straight up at my computer while I'm working. This helps me work on larger files. But at the same time, uh, this also has the, the display tablets also have a lot of features to them which attract a lot of artists. Like it actually feels like you're looking and drawing into a canvas. So uh, that's also a really good thing. Uh, so it depends. Now the the difference between these two is that this tends to be a little, a lot cheaper than uh, these tablets in terms of the cost. So uh, this is usually where artists tend to differ and think about, is it really worth getting a display tablet over, I mean, getting a, a display tablet over a graphics tablet? And that's all uh, based on your personal preference. Now, apart from this, you guys also have seen me using an iPad a lot, especially if you guys follow me on Instagram. So I use an iPad with a pencil. And a lot of people also just draw directly on their phones, either with a stylus or with their finger. OK, let me just draw a finger. I really respect these artists who just draw directly uh, with their finger. It, it is like an insane level of skill. So now the difference with these from that, uh, from the tablets are that these are self-sufficient. 
they have the software that are that you can install directly in the tablet and you don't need to connect these to any external computer or any other device so uh, uh, now do you go ahead with these or do you prefer those uh, like uh, the display tablets or the tablets versus these again it's based on your personal preferences and the resources that you have now for me personally i like using an ipad uh, for my personal art but the form factor of it uh, i prefer is is quite small so i prefer using a display uh, i mean a graphics tablet with a bigger monitor to actually make a lot of my highly detailed work that i do for the studio but this iPad is what I use for my personal work that you guys can see on Instagram and on social media. And if you can't get an iPad, it's not within your resources. It is very viable to use a phone in, in, in today's world. Phones are really powerful and you do get software to it. Now, we'll get to the software next. So which do you choose? It does not matter. It totally depends on your resources and your comfort zone. All right. Now let's move on to the software. Now I've only locked in on three main software here because this is, uh, these are the main three that I've heard the most in the industry. And these are the three that I've used. Uh, I've used Clipstool to paint only a little, but my main two are uh, Adobe Photoshop and uh, Procreate, okay? Uh, Procreate is limited to the iPad, just remember that, okay? Now, Adobe Photoshop is the most costliest of the software, uh, while Clip Studio Paint is probably the second costliest, and Procreate is the cheapest. Now, the caveat to this is that Procreate is only available on Apple products like the uh, iPhone or the iPad, all right? So just keep that in mind that you can't access Procreate unless you have an Apple product. It's made exclusively for that. Now, there are other software too, and also how important is the software that you use? Honestly, it's not that important. It's whatever you feel like works better for you. Like I said, digital art is just a medium, and the tools you use just help you and aid you in your process. It's like choosing to paint on paper or canvas, choosing different kinds of paints. It's all as part of your personal preference. There's no good or bad. Just keep in mind that Photoshop, because of its power, its capabilities, and also the fact that it's part of Adobe, it is uh, based on an annual subscription payment, which is quite expensive usually. So on, most people who are not professionals usually don't go for that. They go for the uh, other cheaper variants. There's nothing wrong with either of them. Uh, so just keep that in mind. You can use any software that you want. Okay, so now my recommendations for uh, devices. Okay, I get this question a lot, all the time. I get a lot of questions regarding, hey, what do you recommend? Uh, what uh, do I use? What can I afford? What, what do I need to get started as a digital artist, either as a hobbyist or as a professional? So if we start with a low budget, okay, you just need an Android phone. Okay, now if you have a stylus, go for it. But I do recommend getting a graphics tablet, uh, one without a screen, which you can connect to it. And you do get software like Ibis Paint, uh, you do get Medibang, you do get uh, Autodesk Sketchbook, all of that, which you can use directly on the phone and then just sketch it out, okay? So you, uh, you will be looking at the phone screen and drawing on this tablet over here. Now, if you have a mid budget, okay? Now, a mid-range, uh, you can go for a gaming laptop, a mid-range gaming laptop, uh, or an iPad Pro with an Apple Pencil. Now, this Apple Pencil with the iPad Pro usually costs the same amount as getting a mid-range gaming laptop with the, with the graphics tablet. So usually they end up being the same cost. Especially if you're getting like a larger iPad Pro, the 12.9 inch, it definitely will end up either costing more than that or around the same. That's why I put them both uh, next to each other. Uh, they're both equally viable and powerful. High budget, just you can always go for a high-end laptop. I recommend usually a MacBook Pro for artists, creators, and designers. Uh, and a huge uh, display tablet, which usually is the Wacom Cintiq. Okay. 
So that is uh, just the devices and my recommendations for it. Okay, now let's just go on to the next session, which is don't make these mistakes. I'm just also gonna check the chat just a little. Okay, hold on. Okay, all right, so I think we are all in order. So now that we finished the basics of actually getting into digital art, the tools you require and the software, and before we go into the main lesson, we are going to get into the mistakes, okay? Like, what are the mistakes? Because I made all of these mistakes, actually. I made so much uh, of everything that I'm gonna show you. So this is exactly based on my experience, and I'm gonna take you through it all, okay? Firstly, <laughs> don't rely too much on brushes, okay? So you guys might see brushes all over the internet, like even my brush sets and so on. And as a beginner, you might get overwhelmed and you might try and use a lot of different brushes to make one painting as a whole. Now, I'm not saying don't avoid all kinds of brushes actually, uh, but just keep it limited, especially when you're starting off. Find one or two good brushes that you like and then start off with that. Like for example, my brush, which I found out after a lot of experimentation is like this block brush, which I love using. Uh, and I can just show you how powerful using default brushes are. Like this is just a round brush and that's a block brush. And this is usually most of which you will need. And apart from this, as you get more and more experienced, you will learn how to either create or use brushes that will just you know, fit in really well into your workflow. So it's best to first try and learn from the scratch up. It's like, again, if you think of it like trying to get into watercolor painting and then buying all the different kinds of brushes that you can find and not knowing how to use them. At the end, it tends to be a little overwhelming and you might end up, uh, you know, creating a lot of imbalances in your paintings without knowing how to use the tools correctly. Now, let me give you an example. So if you guys look at both of these artworks, okay, from a distance, now they, they look like finished painting, they look, they look like finished scenes, right? But what if I told you that both of these paintings were made with just the default round brush, okay? These, if you zoom in, it is just the default round brush that I use entirely for both the paintings. Let me show you guys here. So you see the city, it is just, Default round brush that I'm just painting buildings, painting lights. And just building out the entire image with just the default round brush. So uh, even the character, the character outline, there's, there's no shading. Uh, I mean, there's no other smudge brushes or anything. It's just the default round brush. So that, that's what, if you guys stick to the fundamentals and actually stick with just a few brushes, uh, you guys are going to learn a lot faster than trying to find, you know, all the various kinds of brushes for various needs. Okay. And for those asking, is the session going to be recorded? I've been told that, yes, it will be recorded and the link will be sent to all of you guys. So uh, that's also a really good thing. Now, let me show you an example of a painting I made when I first started making art and like digital art without knowing how to use brushes and just creating a hodgepodge of a lot of things. Okay, so now I downloaded some free tree brushes, so I just spam them over here. I downloaded some rough cloud brushes and spam them as well. And I really didn't understand values, lighting colors, uh, composition, and anything. And this looks like quite a mess to me right now. And it was just spamming all sorts of brushes. I even, I think I even put a photograph of a dragon over here and then painted over it. And uh, yeah, it's quite chaotic. So, and it, it feels like it lacks a lot of depth. Like if this, for example, is in the distance, it should be a lot lighter because it's a presence of atmosphere, but it just looks extremely chaotic. So this is what happens when you just go in first and just try and spam all the brushes you can, try and finish speed paintings as fast as possible and all of that. Okay, next thing is don't get too caught up in the details. Okay. So what I mean by not getting too caught up in the details, 
I mean, when you start making a painting, say, okay, let me just draw on top of this itself. Okay. Uh, so let's say this is your canvas, right? Say this is your canvas and you start painting your, say, okay, you have like a beach, you have some trees, some palm trees, you have some water, you, you have some rocks over here, you have a lighthouse that's casting some light, uh, it's, it's at night, so you have some cool clouds in the sky, you also have a moon, uh, you know, you have a scene like this and you're just painting it. A lot of times people zoom in all the way and will detail out the grass like anything over here, detail out a rock, detail out all these details and just go crazy at this point. And then when they zoom out, you know, after detailing all this, the rest of the painting looks a little off balance and bland as compared to this part over here. So it looks messy. Then they'll go in and detail out this lighthouse, add some lighting, uh, all of all those things. And then that part looks a little too chaotic. Uh, so then it kind of ruins the painting as a whole. Uh, so what, what I mean to say not get too caught up in the details is actually first try and create an overall layout. Try to first create a rough painting of uh, your image, your idea before actually going in and focusing on the details and using a lot of textures, using a lot of brushes early on because then you won't know how to balance it out initially. Now, also let me show you guys an example. Now this painting uh, might look a little detailed when you look at it from a zoomed out point, right? Uh, this is, I think if I remember, it's uh, the metro in Bangalore. And while this might look detailed, if you actually zoom in, you guys can see just how bare bones uh, my buildings are. That's how bare bones the trees are. It, it's just completely uh, devoid of actually going in, painting grills, painting ACs, painting water pipes, all of that. You don't need to go all of go all that way. Like even if you look at the traffic below, it's just smudges of dark and light. Okay, just lights. And I painted this with entirely with one rectangle brush. Let me just switch back to it. I don't like that brush. Yeah, so this brush, yeah. So uh, yeah, so now as a whole, once I create a painting that looks rough as a whole and it looks tight together, then I can zoom in and then start fleshing out each of the parts and actually take it to a higher level without doing that right from the beginning. <clears throat> so first, think about layouting and capturing your image as a general. This is why a lot of people do rough sketches first, rough colors, and then go in and add in the details towards the end. They don't start with the detailing, which is what I notice a lot of beginners make. Like if they make a small object, they'll go and detail it that out totally and then move on to the next one. So just think about keeping an overall uh, uh, basic uh, layouting to your image first, even if it's characters and all, and then start building on the details layer by layer. <laughs> okay, the next thing is, don't focus on too many different things, okay? What I mean by this is when you get started, you get overwhelmed. Now, I'm not taking credit for these images. This I just found by typing in the fundamentals of art on Google. I don't know who created this, but if anyone wants the credit for this image is over here. <clears throat> now, I just found this because when I also got into art, I was like, oh, what are the fundamentals? Oh, I, I need to get uh, crazy good at them. Oh, I, I really need to you know, focus on all of them. And then when I first tried to start, I would focus on perspective, proportion, uh, anatomy, color, all of those things in at one go. Like I tried to paint an entire scene uh, which has backgrounds, characters, all of that with, and try and improve at everything at just one shot. <clears throat> and that was too much to handle because it's really hard to improve in many different things. And also based on our personal interests and skill sets, we may not have the capacity to actually improve at different things at the same level. So for example, if your interest is, is in drawing backgrounds, focus on drawing backgrounds. If your interest is characters, focus on that first then learn how to draw uh, backgrounds behind it. It's a step-by-step -step process. <clears throat> uh, it's a step-by-step -step process. So uh, just take your time and uh, give it the time it requires. 
And don't focus too much on these fundamentals. I'll tell you guys a good way on how to get them in. Okay. <clears throat> okay, next thing is, don't get too caught up on the software. Now over here again, we're gonna just uh, repeat the fact that there's no right or wrong software. So use whichever one you have access to, use whichever one you can uh, find or afford, whatever your resources are and whichever you guys are most comfortable with, all right? Now, the next thing, which is very important, especially when starting off, uh, when it comes to digital art, is not to use bad references. Now, what do I mean by bad references is don't focus on, uh, don't focus on pictures that are too edited, that are too much of another artist's impression of it, because you want to understand the fundamentals, you want to understand how to paint things that are more grounded in reality first before learning how to exaggerate it. <clears throat> so for example, if you look at these images, they might look phenomenal, okay? These guys, I'm not saying these are bad images, but if you were to start your digital art journey painting things that are extremely exaggerated, it would make it a lot harder to paint things that are truly based in reality or from your imagination. So because right from the get-go, you are painting someone else's style you are painting someone else's uh, work uh, in this sense, especially if they are exaggerated to this point. So it's a so keep in mind to start clicking your own pictures or finding things that are more based in your surroundings, based in your interests, as opposed to trying to paint exaggerated things right from the get go. Now let's move on to what is the fastest way to improve. Okay, so what is the fastest way to improve? Now this, I'm gonna take you guys exactly through what I did to improve my digital art paintings in a single year. And that is studies. Now, a lot of the time studies are mistaken uh, for, uh, for other things as opposed to, you know, just uh, people assume that it's more to do with just copy pasting work and just looking at an image and just copying it or actually going and studying theory, look at reading books and so on. But what I mean by a study is to find a reference image or find an artwork that you like, find a reference piece and try and copy it to a certain point where you answer the questions you're asking. Okay, like if you find an image that you like, ask yourself what you like about it. Do you like the lighting? Do you like the color? Do you like uh, the form, the structure? And try and emulate that and replicate that in your work. And then as soon as that's done, move on to the next one. Don't get too caught up in too many different uh, uh, facets where you're trying to copy exactly the lighting that's on point. Because when you start doing studies, you're gonna make a lot of mistakes. You're not gonna make good studies right from the get go. You're gonna take longer. So. Take an image, try and emulate it to the best of your current capacity, and then move on to the next one. And I'll show you guys exactly what I mean. So this is exactly what I did to go from 2015, September to 2016. And um, why did I go about that? Okay, so here's a bit of a backstory where when I first got into digital painting, I had this idea of I wanted to paint a concrete sky. So I thought I'll be, oh, hey, I wanted to become a concept artist and I had no idea what it was. So I was like, a concrete sky, it sounds like a really cool thing to paint. So I made a rough sketch. I made a rough sketch. Then I tried and colored it really haphazardly and I did not like it. It looks totally burnt out. I tried using photo filters. I tried using a lot of stuff and all of that. <clears throat> so then uh, the next day, I tried to uh, collect references and redraw it. Now I'm figuring out perspective. Now I'm figuring out other things just by using references. But then I didn't know how to actually paint it, right? So I started photo bashing things in, right? I started just clear, taking pictures off of Google and just stamping them in, taking clouds and stamping them in. But if you look at the things like perspective, like if this image, if you're looking from down up at it, we should also be looking from down up at these images, but these images look like they're totally flat and looking straight at us, right? So the whole image is quite imbalanced. 
Like, I'm not sure what all is happening here. And, and at this point, I kind of like gave up. I kind of got really frustrated and I had given up at this point. <clears throat> but I got to give credit again where it is due. This is one of my classmates, my batchmates. He's currently a concept artist at Ubisoft. His name is Vignesh. So at around that time, Vignesh was making studies like these. And he would make these in like 20 minutes in, in class. So in class, he'd just sit and paint all of these. And I'd be like, oh my God. Okay, I'd be like, how are you doing this? How are you so good? How did I get to this level? How are you just painting things that seem so real, that seem so good looking? Okay. So what I did then was I asked him and we're good friends. He told me that to take pictures, take reference images, take photographs from landscapes or take photographs of yourself and then just try and replicate them, try and study them and uh, keep it uh, as close to reality as possible. Because if you understand how to paint reality, like I said, you can always exaggerate it to whatever point. You can make it cartoony, you can make it hyper-realistic even, or you can add fantasy elements to it, but it, it's always good to be grounded. All right, so then uh, what I did Okay, this is exactly what I did was I downloaded a bunch of reference images. Okay. And why did I go and do landscapes? Firstly, because I didn't know how to paint backgrounds at all. Being a traditional artist who painted portraits, I only could paint people's faces and hair. And when you're making landscapes, you don't have to worry too much about accuracy, right? you don't have to worry about messing things up. Like for example, if I say, hey, this is a tree, right? And I can draw a really janky tree, right? But if I say, hey, you know, this is a, a face and I, and I goof up the proportions, you know, uh, and I'm trying to draw a real person, uh, it, it ends up looking uh, quite bad, especially when you're doing portraits. So when you're doing studies, uh, it's usually good to find things that are easier for you to do. Like if you're painting trees, rocks, backgrounds, because even if you goof it up, it'll still look like a tree, rock, or a background. But if you're painting things that are more in tune with uh, uh, like things that we recognize, that like human faces, uh, animals, and then you goof it up, it gets a lot harder. So when you start doing studies, pick things that are much easier for you to do. Easy. Another example are still life objects. And that's just going to help you develop the painting quite a lot. So what I did was I would take a canvas and I'd split it into just like this. So I'd split the top half and I'd put the reference image over here. I take the, if you want, if you guys want to know the specifications, it was the A4 size canvas uh, that is uh, available in all software, or you can just check the proportions. I think it's eight inches into 11 inches. So then I'd split it into two. And on the top, I put my reference image. And at the bottom, I'd sit and I'd paint. I'd paint for hours. I'd, I'd just try and replicate it without color picking, without doing, uh, without trying to use a grid, without tracing, any of that. And initially, when I started, these took me around six to eight hours per piece because I was just trying to understand. Like, if I could not paint the color, I'd keep trying to find the color that worked. I'd, I'd just keep trying to understand which colors worked, like keep working it on the side, and then I'll use that color, you know? So these paintings took a lot of time. Now, let me give you guys um, some other examples just to show you that not all of them are that, uh, <clears throat> uh, that in depth. So this is a reference image, and I wanted to learn how to paint these water reflections and how to paint uh, this lighting over here. So I've not replicated it exactly, but if I zoom out enough and keep it, I can actually see that it does look like an image. It does look like water. Uh, it does look like light reflecting over here. And once I was able to capture this, I moved on to the next study. So this is another example uh, where uh, this was a reference image and this was my painting. So this was the ref. And this is the painting. For these, uh, I took maybe about half an hour to an hour each. So I would sit and do these every single day and just try and emulate it. Like I said, without color picking. Yeah, I couldn't really capture the clouds. I wanted to capture this soft, fluffy feel, but I ended up capturing these broader strokes. 
But I figured I'd do that on the next one as long as I capture, capture the general mood, the general vibe of the scene. Here's another reference where that looks totally off. Like I did not capture the composition in the same way. I just wanted to capture the look and feel. I didn't, did not get the correct lighting, but that's okay, right? We don't capture things uh, exactly. We always don't have the best day, you know, but you just got to keep doing it. Uh, keep studying, keep studying. Here's another reference image, here's another study. And this is exactly how I started building my skills up over and over uh, again. Uh, here are some more studies. Here, I didn't want to, I shortened the board. I just wanted to try and capture just the general mood, the vibe. Oh yeah, I wanted to capture this lighting over here. So I'm understanding and I'm learning different things from different paintings, which, over, which all in all is just extremely helpful. Okay, so these on the left are the references. And yeah, these are the paintings, these two on the right. So again, uh, yours also where I am figuring out some brushes that I'm creating. I'm like, okay, hey, I have a project that requires me to do a lot of grass. So let me understand how grass works. Let me first do it with the default brown brush, then paint it out and just figure things out. So this, I do a lot of practice that I usually don't put up online uh, that happens behind the scenes. And as you get more comfortable, you can also start studying other artists' works. So this is the reference from uh, the Ghibli uh, film, uh, Totoro. Uh, that's the ref. And uh, this is my study. Now, uh, I couldn't actually copy the exact watercolor feel of this, but I tried to do my best at the time. Uh, I also didn't have too much uh, time. I usually give myself about half an hour to an hour just to practice uh, whenever I can. Lately, I haven't had too much time. It's busy, but I do plan to always get back to studies. Uh, it's always been extremely helpful. Now, okay. Now let me guys give, I mean, let me give you guys a good workflow on how to get about creating your own scenes. Okay. So now that you guys have done a lot of studies, okay. Now say you've done a few weeks, a few months of studies. Now that you'll have understood how to get some of those fundamentals in, now that you're understanding color, un lighting, understanding space, just by doing studies, <laughs> just by looking at reference images, just by replicating them, uh, now I'll give you guys a small guide on how to actually go about my workflow when it comes to creating my own original artworks, okay? First thing is called uh, thumbnails. Now, what exactly is a thumbnail? Now, a thumbnail is just a very rough sketch that you make uh, with just rough lines. Uh, let me just show you guys quickly. Say we have a canvas that's about this size. Now I want to imagine painting a girl sitting in a window seat, right? So I, now without me making an entire final painting, with my visual library knowledge, with looking at reference images, uh, I can just start sketching something out really rough. Say I can place a girl over here, some hair. Just sitting over here and uh, there's a city outside, okay? Now I can start testing my idea. I can see if it works. I can put some frames on the wall. I can make this a bed, add some pillows, add a bed post. And now I can start visualizing my idea a lot better. Now you start seeing things once you start putting it up. But maybe I don't like it. Maybe I want a different composition. Maybe I want to uh, change it up, right? Maybe this is not going to end up like a great painting. So I make a few iterations of it. So I always keep them really rough, like just black and white. This is grayscale. So, and then out of these, I can then pick one image and turn it into a final painting. So I always suggest, especially when you guys are starting, uh, try and create a lot of thumbnails, these rough sketches, as a quick guide to help you understand what your final painting is going to look like. Say if I decide to go ahead with frame number two, I've already seen how it can look at this rough stage. It's out of my mind. It's on the canvas. It's in front of me. I can then take as much time as I need, use the studies I had, uh, use all what I've learned to actually make it into a final artwork. So all of the, out of all of these, I decided to go with that one, number two, and then uh, just add 
uh, colors to it and bring it to life. Similarly, if you guys spend a lot of time just making all your rough ideas out first. Now, these are the things that are not pretty. The other things that we don't usually put are on Instagram. These are the behind the scenes. Uh, this happens a lot in the industry when, when we storyboard, when we create a lot of thumbnails. Uh, so that this helps us clear our mind and just start putting out things on the canvas and helping us actually visualize better. Because a lot of times we get inspired and then we try and paint something and it turns out horrible. But instead of putting all the effort with colors, instead of putting all that time and trying to salvage something, I suggest you guys first start making a very rough sketch. Add, add grayscale if you want, add shading if you want, but it's not necessary. I just do that because I like seeing the lighting of a scene beforehand. And it's very basic, very easy to do. And once you have these done, you can then take it to the next stage of adding colors. Similarly, these are some of the examples of ones that I've taken to very rough color stages. Like a lot of these are mostly just scribbled in with colors. But now one of these I can then take into a finished painting. So this is, a, this is an exercise I do to help me understand how, to, how the final painting would look before actually going in and, uh, you know, drawing things out, uh, taking the time and uh, finishing it and then looking horrible. So uh, I can just show you guys the quick workflow for making a thumbnail right now. Say, oops. So this is again the canvas. Now say, I want to imagine a guy cycling uh, in, in the morning, right? Say, Okay, just placing him here. Okay, he is now uh, cycling across a road. There are going to be some buildings in the distance. I can actually lower these buildings, make it seem like he's not that close to the city. So putting these ideas down actually helps me understand, or I can even remove the buildings. Maybe I can uh, add a lamp pole here, add some bushes. Here. Maybe I can add uh, some smaller buildings in the distance. Okay, then I want to add, then I can see how, okay, how do I add clouds to this? Maybe I can add a single cloud there. And now I get this, right? Now under the sketch layer, I'm just going to uh, fill up this canvas with like a gray color, maybe a little darker color. Then, this is exactly how I go about adding these uh, values. Okay, why is it not painting? It's, it, oh, uh, I think my health system hung. Yeah, oh, hold on, my, my Photoshop just hung. <laughs> Oh man. Okay, so my Photoshop hung, the brush isn't working, but normally what I do is I just fill in this with some, uh, with just basic colors, okay? Uh, I wish I could show you guys completely, but it's just a bit frozen right now uh, in terms of the brushes. But yeah, so this is usually what I do uh, when I'm trying to create an original artwork. Uh, even sometimes for the reels I create, I do make a rough sketch initially and then get that out. Now, what, 
And now, if I were to suggest some steps to follow as the time is running out of here, uh, I created a small guide to show you guys if I were to start today, uh, what would I do? Again, sorry for the value thing I was doing all year. My Photoshop is hung. I has hung. I can't draw anything. And I don't want to shut down and restart right now. So, uh, oh, it's not. OK. <laughs> oh, sorry. Let me just quickly show you guys what I do. Yeah, I'm just taking the lasso tool, filling that in with the light color. And I just roughly add in some buildings just to get an idea, just to get an idea of the composition. So now I realize that this foreground is not standing out too well. So then I can just make this entire thing a bit darker. Uh, I can put some lighting behind the character, to silhouette the character, make him stand out, make him stand out against the buildings. And, uh, yeah, so roughly, this is a quick example of a sketch to see if it works or not. Uh, and this is what I do all the time, just to get in uh, my ideas out. So moving on, now this is a guide that I created to give you guys that I would give to myself if I was starting today. And that is, okay, step one is to invest. Now, what I, team, uh, what I mean by invest is, sorry, you can e either invest into spending a little money and getting equipment if you have it, like if you need a drawing tablet or if you need a phone or something like that which works, or invest time. Time is usually the best thing. You could invest you know, an hour a day, two hours a day, and uh, if you already have the equipment, uh, time is extremely important. So if you want to get good at digital art, you actually have to invest a lot of time. Uh, like I said, I used to spend six to eight hours every day doing studies, and uh, that was after college hours. So I really put in a lot of time to improve in that one year. Uh, next thing you need to know is to start slow. Uh, one simple study a day based on your personal interests. Now, if you're interested in gaming, and if you're interested in uh, props, if you're interested in still life, start with basics, okay? If you're interested in gaming, don't go and study the entire character right away. Uh, start with something small, start with a prop, start with something where you can practice painting, something that you can practice your fundamentals on. Paint, step three, once you do that, is then to start painting every day when or whenever you can. If you can paint three times a week, keep it consistent. Uh, I say every day because I set that as goal, so uh, it just makes it feel more important to me. But if you can paint three times a week, please do that and just keep it consistent. Keep doing that as much as you can. After that, now once you're doing a lot of studies, once you start say a month or two of studies, maybe even six months, pick four artists you look up to and study from them, okay? Now what I mean is not to copy exactly their style, but for example, is some like different artists have different ways of drawing things, of representing things. So for example, if I were to draw trees, right? I would probably draw a tree, something like this. I put in a texture of something I, I created. And then just block it in, you know? But say another artist has another way of representing trees, which is actually drawing an outline, say for bushes, drawing the outlines of grass, so once you start studying from other artists, you understand different ways by which people represent reality or different ways by which people represent uh, their ideas, their imagination. So once you start studying from them, now I used to do this a lot. I used to study artists like Ate Galen, Goro Fujita, Zach Reds, and I picked up a lot of my talent, especially Pascal Campion, uh, from a lot of these artists. So uh, keep in mind uh, that you're not trying to steal uh, from their work, you're just trying to understand and study them. So that's also a big uh, uh, boost to your skill set, to your visual library. 
And after you're done with step four, start practicing rough thumbnails. Now, this is where you're going to start creating a lot of original work. Like the rough sketch I gave you guys, or so if the guys are cycling, try and create a few of that with different ideas. Try and do a lot of different scenes from different camera angles. If you're trying to understand perspective, first make a lot of rough sketches and practice thumbnailing. Then start taking step six would be to take your thumbnails to finish paintings. Now, yours, when you take, go back to the studies, learn from uh, whatever you learn from the studies and start implementing that into your finished works. All right. So then take it to your finished paintings. And step seven. Step seven is my favorite. This is sick. Step seven is where you create a personal project for yourself. Okay. Now, what do I mean by a personal project? Now, a personal project can be a set of paintings, a set of digital artworks that you dedicate entirely and you give them a theme. Say, for example, I want to create my own original character and I want to uh, place them in different scenarios. Or I want to create, say, a webcomic. Or I want to create 10 illustration uh, book covers. You know, set a personal project because this helps you understand and break down the workflow of digital art a long way ahead and also gets you more accustomed to how the industry works and gets you more accustomed to working on projects and also keeps you motivated because after a certain point we all reach a point uh, we all reach uh, a stage where we're like what do i paint today okay what do i paint what do i work on next you know we always get lost at different points so having a personal project that you work on if it's an original character if it's you know painting for a game painting for a book painting album covers or, you know, just pick music and give them album covers, you know, give them album art. Keeping that and setting it for like five to ten paintings, create that and see it through. Okay, now this is important. This is super cool because now this adds a lot of systematic workflow into your skill set already. And the last point would be to make sure you enjoy your journey. Okay, it's not meant to be stressful. It's meant to be fun. And I hope you guys... Uh, have a good, good time along your ways. Uh, I totally enjoyed my journey till now. I enjoyed even making this presentation. And yeah, I think we are right on time. So if you guys want, try and follow this. This is what I would do right now if I were to start from scratch. And also another thing would be that if I am planning to create a full-fledged course, uh, which I am gonna put out soon, I'm already working on it. So if you guys, want to sign up for that waitlist, that uh, you're going to get ex uh, some exclusive uh, benefits from that. So you guys can always uh, just sign up to this and be ready for the course uh, when it is right there. I'm just going to add it over here. I'm going to share the link and I'll also make sure that you guys get the link as well directly and we can see how to go about that. But overall, uh, yeah, this was a quick guide um, from my side to you guys. And I know I went over the basics right from the scratch, but uh, that's also because uh, a lot of people don't know where to start. Uh, you all are very new to digital art. So that's why I also went over the basics of devices, basics of software. So, and this recording will be uh, available to you guys uh, uh, at the link which you guys have mentioned. So since we are done for time, I also plan on holding more of these courses and going more into uh, a little more detail and a little more into depth where I actually paint live in front of you guys, take you guys from the beginning to the end of an actual painting. So stay tuned for it, uh, okay? And uh, I thank you guys. I'm just going to stop sharing my screen right now. And uh, I hope that this was a good talk for you guys and uh, that you enjoyed it all. So thank you guys. I will catch you guys soon.